Urbanus Astrum was once an arc full of its own sense of majestic beauty, incredible scenery, and ever so deadly dinosaurs. It has been completely overrun by creatures that only exist in our fantasies. One survivor, who henceforth shall be known only as the Wizard, discovered powerful black magic and opened a rift in reality itself, unleashing hundreds of creatures into the world. He is growing stronger day by day, and if I don't stop him in 100 days, I may never be able to. He has enlisted the help of many different guardians. I found that they are the ones holding the portal open, allowing the wizard to draw his power. But I have to be careful. Once the wizard learns I am trying to stop him, he will start summoning more and more forces to take me down. Will I be able to recruit and learn the ways of these new beings so that I can bring down the wizard? Well, it all started on a beach, immediately under attack by a goblin. So I ran off down the beach, grabbing some berries before punching a tree for thatch. Crafting some chibis, I named one subscribe. Made some basic tools and spears before killing the gremlin so he wouldn't be able to tell the wizard of my existence. I spent some time making a bow and arrows when I saw a massive dude walking along the beach. Yeah, nope. As I slowly backed away to continue harvesting thatch for chibis, I set up a fire to cook myself some meat before turning to murder a nearby turtle. When I saw another massive guy fighting the one I had just seen. I guess not everyone who came from that realm is a fan of the wizard, so maybe I can recruit some of them to join me later, whether willingly or not. I finally killed the turtle before harvesting its chitin, set up a one by one foundation and mortar and pestle before spending the rest of the day harvesting bushes for narco berries. In the morning, I saw the big guy getting awfully close to my base, but he actually turned out to be friendly. No clue what race or species for that matter, but I may have to recruit him later. I killed another turtle for its meat and chitin before running up to a blue drop and I wasn't a high enough level. When as I was getting dark, I saw a giant walking crab man on my beach, and he definitely did not look friendly. So I chose to just avoid him and spend the remaining parts of the day harvesting wood, thatch, stone and flint. Another one of the wizard's minions found a kobold, but I needed some companions, so I boiled it, tranked it out, and tamed it. These little guys aren't very strong, so I named him Krillin, as I was fully expecting him to die. Showed him to my base, and I just, well, you know, left him to protect it. I saw a dead crab man in the morning and took the opportunity to harvest his rotting corpse when I saw a giant anglerfish man, who must have been the species that, that shell golem was fighting earlier. And since the golem was a friend, this must be an enemy. And I began pelting it with arrows from the high ground. And Krillin wanted to try and help out, but immediately got killed. But that let me learn that this was an abyssal Inros. I would need to avenge Krillin though. Eventually killing the Inros and harvesting its corpse, I set up a small sign in mourning of Krillin before crafting the raft and beginning to move all my stuff onto it when I saw a terror I could bowl her, trank and shove my meat into. My terror was awake and tamed in the morning when I named my tribe the World Saviors. As well, that's what I was here to do. It is my destiny. That was almost just ended by that in Ross. Thankfully, I was able to swim away, but his ominous floating through the water was just terrifying. I eventually swam to shore and whistled over my terror finished moving my stuff over and set up a basic raft design that I'd be able to finish later. Grab my stuff to go on the raft and set sail. When as I was leaving I saw a kraken on the island. Yeah, not going there. I also saw a shell man on the shore and was going to say hello but he looked mad at me so I sailed away. Must have been one of the wizard's minions. Hopefully he doesn't snitch on my location as I found a really cool bridge going out over the water. Ran out to check it out and this looked like a pretty good base location. So I parked my boat to end off the day. I spent the morning killing the local fauna for their hide when I was able to bowler another terror to trank it out. Set up a forge to smelt some ingots when my terror finally tamed up so I named them terrible and pathetic. Since both were just incredibly low levels. Then running down the beach, I saw some shark people swimming in the water. Seeing they were friendly, I decided to offer him some meat in order to convince him to join my tribe, and the meat was gratefully accepted, but would take some more convincing in order to pledge his allegiance. 
when as the sun was rising, a goblin and kobold had found me. I managed to bowl and kill them with the assistance of the trike that was pissed at them too. Now these must have just been scouts and the wizard will soon realize that these guys aren't coming back. So I need to start recruiting some more backup if I have any hope to survive. I crafted up some billboards and trank arrows to tame that trike that had helped me with the goblin when out of the woods came a divine paladin. But he did not think I had the experience to be worth talking to so he just ignored me as I finally knocked out the trike, shoved some berries up its butt and now there was an ant walking around near my raft who thankfully was friendly as well. And then a crab man showed up, not the same species of crab man I saw earlier and this guy was interested in hearing what I had to say, so I gave him some cooked meat, but then he was full and told me to come back later. The shark man was then willing to accept some more food and I learned that he is a Tiber, a race of shark folk who usually have no interest in land dwellers, but being here in the strange land of Ebonus Astrum, he knew they would all have to pick a side eventually. The paladin was still not interested in me, before finally in the evening I was able to saddle up my PT, so I never took my first flight just yet in case the wizard sees my location. Waking up on day 7, I tranked out another PT before seeing my trike had finished taming, saddled it up and used it to do a mass of bush and tree harvesting, gathering berries, thatch and wood. When I had my first panic moment as I saw a dragon flying around nearby, this must have been the wizard searching for me. But he fortunately did not see me as I was able to hide behind this tree as it flew away. I guess that sea man from earlier had contacted the wizard. I would need to be careful. I set up a smithy as I wanted some metal tools when the crab man I met earlier was finally ready to be recruited into the tribe. He even allowed me to get a lift on his shoulders when I learned his name is Mr. Krabs. And Mr. Krabs is actually a fantastic wood gatherer. Maybe after this wizard is defeated he can be a lumberjack. So I spent the rest of the day gathering a ton of wood with Mr. Crab. Before finally in the morning, I took off on my terrible as I needed a better idea of my surroundings. I saw a little gnome who I stopped by to say hi, except I had nothing he wanted, so I wasn't able to tap, I mean recruit him, when a forest troll spotted me and tried to chase me off, but my PT was strong enough to kill him. I ended up landing on the ledge to begin setting up my fortress as this would be a strong defensible position should the wizard send his forces to attack. I ended up running out of some wood so needed to get Mr. Krabs to cut down some more trees before expanding the floor plan to a point I was happy with for the remaining parts of the day. And in the morning I took off in search of crystal as I really needed a spyglass. I even flew past a cave troll in the evening and the wizard was getting lots of weird creatures for his army. I eventually saw some crystal on the cliff in the distance as was able to sneak around as there was a cyclops smashing around. But I gathered my crystal and left. And as I was flying back to my base, I began to see some meteors raining down right on my base. The wizard had found me. He had started a meteor storm right near my base. I would have to navigate extremely carefully and thankfully no meteors had hit my base just yet but this just goes to show why you have to be extremely careful with keeping your location and information hidden whether it's in game where a wizard is trying to find you or simply on the internet where hackers are trying to get your information that's why it's important to use products like nordvpn a vpn is effectively an invisibility cloak for your data it keeps you safe by masking your ip address and NordVPN does this by routing you through over 5,000 servers across 59 countries. Nord is also incredibly easy to use. Simply click a location and you instantly change your IP address. You can even use it to fool Netflix to think you're in a different country so you can watch your favorite shows. NordVPN can be used across six devices and on every major platform. Nord also has a brand new function of threat protection where it will actively scan and get rid of threats that you don't realize are there. So even when you're not using the VPN, Nord is keeping you safe. Nord is basically like a Xenomacrop scaring away all the baddies. So unless you want to get your base smashed by a wizard raining down meteors, then make sure to use the link in my video description so that you receive 4 months absolutely free. There's never been a better time to improve your internet security. Thanks Nord for sponsoring today's video. Once the meteor storm had finished, I went to go check on the Tiber and they were both completely unscathed from the wizard's attack. And actually, 
everyone is pretty okay. I think the wizard was too focused on his portal to be able to make his meteor deal any damage. They were just stunning everything on impact. I finished placing down some foundations and walls for my base, as I would definitely need defense if the wizard chose to actually send a force to attack me. When in the morning, I finished placing the walls before flying out on terrible only to run out of stamp right next to a goblin. Rip. Terrible. But at least I was able to immediately avenge him by killing the goblin. I went to go check on the Tiber only to be accidentally killed when a piranha bit his toes and he rage attacked, killing me instantly. Note to self, don't get on the shark people's bad side. I got back to my stuff, grabbing it from my grave, and the Tiber was still happy to have my recruitment meet, even if he had killed me. When I got a chance to place a sign in remembrance of Terrible, my terrible Pteranodon, that truly was terrific for his time. In the morning, a Therizino had ended up on my beach and these things are absolutely deadly. It had even gained the attention of my Pteranodon, so I whistled away my PT before aggroing the Therry. That was so close. I'm just glad that the Nature Defender was able to win the fight, as that Therry would have ruined my day. I need to get one of those nature defenders sometime. I continued trying to recruit the Tebra, but they were pretty hard to convince, so it was taking a really long time to recruit them. I finally had one of the Tebra fully recruited in the evening, and they were so happy to be a part of the team. They even let me ride on their shoulders, so I gave them a recruitment badge to help me finish recruiting their friend, as that is one feature of Peria. Sentience are mostly all tameable, once you have your first sentient, as they are able to spread the word of your rule, recruiting others to your cause. So you are not expected to sit there shoving meat up there, uh, uh, I mean making them dinner. I ended up naming my first Tebow Bruce, and Bruce ended up helping me take out a stupid seagull who was bothering me. And finally in the morning, Bruce had finished recruiting his friend to the tribe, when that paladin from earlier was now here and interested in hearing what Bruce had to say. So I left Bruce to finish recruiting the paladin while I tamed a nearby Ursa Cetus. I named Bruce's friend, Brucette, when I realized Bruce was actually a better recruiter than I thought, as she was busy recruiting a goblin stabber, one of the wizard's minions. A kobold did try to assassinate me, but Bruce and Brucette had my back and quickly took it out. You'll have to try harder than that, wizard. I flew off on my terra to gather some metal so I could set up a feeding trough for all my dinos. And it was morning by the time Bruce had fully recruited the paladin and goblin when I saw a spino nearby. So Brucette, Bruce and I charged in to take it out before it noticed us. We were deadly, even taking down an orc that was scouting the area. It looks like the wizard is already recruiting stronger forces to join his army. I'll have to start recruiting and building an army soon before he comes knocking again at my base. But for now, I sent off Bruce and Brucette on a hunt, so they'll come back once they are finished. And day 13, I was spending the day harvesting a bunch of resources with my trike when I spotted a troll who was scouting my area. But he never saw me. Then in the morning, I went out to tame another Terra, only to have it get attacked by a kobold. So I tamed it. That's a tame, right? Kobolds aren't sentient. Eh, uh, I suppose. I named him Krillin too, when I was jumped by a goblin. So I knocked him out and recruited him to my tribe. His name was Grubbo, before flying off to investigate an ominous island full of weird battle-like creatures and a monolono ding-dong alongosaurus. Okay, I, I promise that's its actual name. See, it, it says it right there. As I continued my scouting mission, I spotted an abyssal sorcerer on the shores, as well as this giant crab. The wizard must be summoning in more creatures and recruits. I'll have to step up my game soon. I ended up landing on a nearby beach to tame another Terra. And yeah, I got ambushed. This wizard's troops are scary. And waking up at base, Bruce and Brucette were back from their hunt, so I sent them on a new one to gather more supplies. 
uploaded this weird snake dog thing called a bantu in the morning and began tranking it out well that could have gone better i got back my stuff and just got my paladin perseus and team to take it out since well i didn't want to die again i spotted some nasties up the hill nearby so enlisting perseus to give me some backup we began venturing our way up the hill well turns out perseus is a pretty good fighter being able to heal cast fireball and is impressive with the sword we ended up taking down two theories who were blocking our patrol route as well as another bantu to end off the day i tranked the new terror in the morning before a thatch golem scared me off so i brought perseus some for some backup the terror tamed and then in the distance we saw what looked to be another paladin and a walking lion wait all lions walk a lion walking on its hind legs yeah whatever perseus did have his recruiter's badge on him and was able to begin convincing both of them to join our tribe so i just let him do all the talking while i ran home with my new terror and saw bruce and brucette were back from their hunt saddled up the terror grabbed a new drop and killed a sheep harvested its mutton before chucking it into a preserving bin for later and then grabbing a lift with brucette as she was a pretty fast swimmer met up with perseus and his new friends named grogor and jeremiah we immediately tag teamed an abyssal troop on the beach before swimming off to fight all of the things we even came up on another sorcerer who we promptly murdered those wizard would have to throw something much tougher at us after we arrived at the beach where i first started this journey it was now infested with the wizard's minions so we had to take them out before finally arriving back where i died earlier to recover my belongings trapped up the terror and my with my ragtag fighting squad we even killed a cyclops he should have kept his one eye open we were heading home in the morning when a water wyvern was blocking our path thankfully it was a pushover but this place was starting to absolutely swarm with enemies the wizard must have already increased the strength of his portal to bring in even more creatures i can only imagine some of the beasts and troops that he'll eventually be throwing at me i did come across medusa but my recruiters weren't able to convince her to join us. I had to be careful though, as I could already feel myself turning to stone. She did at least help us fight a cockatrice and wanted to mess with us. And as we were about to arrive home, I spotted some of the abyssal troops on the beach. So we killed them too. I flew off in the morning as I saw in my tame tracker that the divine berserker had joined us. I got there to find her fighting a cockatrice and Bronto, and she won solo definitely a great addition to the tribe so i put her in a soul wall and once i got home set up some basic storage in my new base on the cliff before transferring everything up set up all my workstations and harvested with my trike for the rest of the day i made some new clothes in the morning so hopefully the wizard wouldn't recognize me as well as headed out on brucette to teach her how to be a lumberjack before spending the rest of the day placing down walls and roofs to close in most of the base day 21 after all the building i went out on my terror in search of an argentavis i eventually found a spot in the morning where i set up my trap shot a nearby argent to lead it in and began to trank it out now that i had this oversized pigeon sleeping i just needed some prom so i killed his friend but i got no prom and that's when i came across the master susceptor one of the wizard's most powerful creations i definitely do not want to fight him if i can help it i also came across an antaras now this thing looks menacing also one of the wizard's most powerful creatures i wonder if there's a way i could tame them because as is if you see here they have no preferred food so i'll have to figure something out if i want to get one myself i did eventually find another argent i was able to kill for some prom but with how long this one took to get i probably should have just used regular meat got back to the argent shoved in the meat and she became my friend now i just needed one more for a breeding pair i found a male in the morning who was able to aggro into my trap even if his friend did come with and that's when splat whoops 
make sure to watch your step people flew back on another terra grabbed my stuff killed its friend who was left in my trap stole no prime meat by the way thanks game jumped on my terra and led in i said i led in the rg closed the gate tranked it up shoved in my meat and it became my friend once i got home i named the two argents brawl and scrawl before setting them up to breathe i couldn't afford a soul terminal as i needed poly so i flew off to the snow once i found the penguins i began to fill their heads with arrows before harvesting their sweet organic polymer but that was not very efficient so I flew off to get myself a club clubbed a few penguins before jumping back on my terra before i freeze to death at this place once i got home i set up my terminal to collect all the argent eggs as i would need some air cons if i was to hatch them then as i was flying nearby i spotted a xenomacrops <laughs> i want some so badly so i hopped off my terra to see if i could attract one's attention come here little guy no i want you to love me there you go a little bit closer that's a good blind squirrel i finally tamed the sino in the morning and these guys are awesome i named him snappers after my sino in the 100 days of arc's hardest mod video i also gave him a little hat to keep the sun out of his face and i spent some time harvesting stone and wood since i needed the resources before setting up a fabricator only to be short some electronics for an aircon so bruce and i went off to murder a few tech stegos as well as harvest some obsidian then in the morning we came up to a raging minotaur it hadn't seen us yet and brusette told me she could take it in so we charged in oh no 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 fight fight brusette fight back Finally killing the Minotaur, all thanks to snappers keeping me away from harm, I might add, but Roop, Brusette. Once I got home, I could see Bruce was distraught. He couldn't even look at me. I gave myself a haircut so I would look like myself once more. And then in the morning, I was able to set up a sign in remembrance of Brusette. I was going to need a lot of metal and electronics. So I took off in search of some tech creatures to tame. When I instead came across a Deinonychus egg that I was able to steal and just Sino fly away. I stole a few more Deinonychus eggs when suddenly something was off. Yeah, I was wearing some chitin armor pieces and those Sinos just shredded me for it. I eventually got back and thankfully Snappers were still safe. So I decided to just continue off on my terror. Stole all the life savings of a few beavers before heading home. And in the morning of day 29, I spent some time working on my small crafting area part of my base, as yes, I still didn't have an actual roof over my head. But are you surprised? Before spending the rest of the day raising up more baby Argents, before saddling one up that had the best stats from Brawl and Scrawl, when I came across another one of those Groot looking tree men. And I saw now I was a high enough level to be able to tame these guys. I just never had any spoiled meat in my pockets. And I would need to come back for him in a bit as I wanted some metal. In the morning after my meat had spoiled I began to feed it to the living trees and once they were tamed I named one broccoli and the other spinach as suggested by my stream chat. I potted them both up before spotting one of the wizard's captains on the beach, an elder troll. So I flew in on my argent to take it out but it had too much help. So I flew off to grab some backup. Let's do this Woo! first captain down the wizard has three main captains that i'll need to defeat before i'm able to determine his whereabouts and that elder troll i think was one of them but he will have many replacements that i'll have to kill there was one troll trying to escape that i managed to snipe but we eventually headed home so I could let the task force rest. As I was off to the desert, where I did come across some more divines, but they weren't interested in joining me since I never had one of my recruiters here. 
As I continued my exploration, seeing tons of weird and wonderful creatures that this wizard had brought into this world, it was all strangely beautiful. But I still had to stop this wizard, and that's when an Arduros spotted me. Oh no! Well, that sucks. <gasps> I need to save snappers. I jumped on a terror and started racing back, and I eventually got back to my Argent, but snappers was nowhere to be seen. Oh, snappers, you're safe. I was extremely thankful that snappers were safe. And once I got home, Grogor and I were able to do a metal run before I headed off into the plains area. This time, not wearing any chitin armor. When... Damn wizards and their meteor storms. I just need to save my Argent. And Snappers, you are absolutely amazing. I set up some more aircons in the morning so I could hatch my Dynonicus, and then as I was flying to go gather some more obsidian, I came across a Dralian. And seeing as it was friendly, I knew I wanted to tame it. I finally managed to get it alone, and so I was able to feed it my meat, and it became my friend. Oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Kill me, please. <laughs> Kill it! Ooh, Kill it! <laughs> that could have been bad. Well, that was really close too. Uh, I'm just gonna head back to base now. I found a text dagger in the morning and was able to trank it out. And once I was sleeping, I saw another Sino who I wanted. But one of the wizard's minions ended up hurting the little guy, so I just gave up on him for the moment. At least the stego was fully tamed, so I ran off in search of another one. And instead just got bullied by some Amagas, so I just flew home with snappers. And in the morning I came across Cringe, one of my patrons playing on the server, as yes, I record these 100 days videos on a private server available to my patrons. And then once I'm finished, the server is made public. So if you want to come and help stop the wizard, join my Discord using the link in the video description, where we also host 100 players like my Civilization videos, and much more coming very soon. I spent the rest of the day putting a roof on parts of my base and it was halfway through day 37 when I ran out of resources and saw a Maywing nearby. Now these duck squirrels are incredible travel mounts so I wanted to trap it. After I eventually gave up and just net gunned it, I shoved in my meat and it was my friend. So I named him Ducky. But I needed a second one to be able to breed them so I went through to the plains where I was able to trank out another who I named Double Rocky before tranking out a third that was a level 174. I just needed some prime so I melted the nearby sauropods. I named the Maywing Doug before heading home. I never did much on day 38 as I spent some time fighting an Alpha Raptor with my Argent. And day 39 started as I looked out over the plants simply admiring the beauty when I heard a disturbance off in the distance. After flying off to investigate, I came across these massive krakens emerging onto the beach. These must be some of the wizard's newest additions to the lands. And then as I was flying home, I saw a massive hulking beast unconscious. This guy must not have managed the portal transport as he was out cold. I proceeded to then spend some time killing this alpha rex as I did desperately need the experience. And that's when I came across a male text ego. Since I still needed one to be able to breed them, I tranked it out, collected some berries, and in the morning it became my friend. Once I arrived home, I quickly filled in my ceiling so I'd have some more space and set up the tech stegos to begin breeding. You'll figure out what these are for later. I spent the rest of the day letting snappers try on the minotaur horn as well as jumping off a cliff so I could easily get water. Before placing down some foundations that would eventually become my garden, and ran the pipe system all the way down to the water. And finally in the morning, I had some fresh flowing taps on my future greenhouse. I never had any seeds though, so I ran out on broccoli to gather up a variety of bushes and fight the local wildlife like some margas. 
even if they did tell me to chill out for a bit. I finally got home the next day, and you know what I didn't do? Plant any seeds. Yeah, I was an idiot and forgot I actually have to put the seeds into the crop plots. As I instead went out on my arch, and as I had actually lost snappers and out in the plains earlier while riding a creature in arc, if you have a shoulder pet and you click reload, it will throw your shoulder pet off. I thankfully found snappers and he was completely safe before getting home and seeing a terror chilling on my roof. So I tranked him out to add to the arsenal. In the morning, I was doing my daily scouts to see if there was anything dangerous nearby and I spotted a feral ogre on the beach. So I quickly flew home to gather the forces and tagging along with broccoli, we charged in to take out the ogre. Once the ogre was down, we continued our patrol and came across the divine conveyance. All my troops had conveniently forgotten their recruitment badges, so racing home to fetch some new badges, we came back and let them start recruiting the conveyance and a nearby centaur who happened to hear them. While they were busy preaching the word of natural causes and why they should subscribe to join the tribe, Broccoli, Bruce and I went into the ocean where I introduced Bruce to some mermaids and they were immediately interested and keen to join us, even swarming Bruce as we passed. This mod pack is really damn weird. Anyways, I left Bruce to finish recruiting them while I just waited around and in the morning, once the centaur and conveyance were both recruited, the team tested their power against a thatch golem nearby and the conveyance was actually incredibly powerful, even throwing up a massive wall of light as a shield. So I brought them all over to the mermaids who were still being recruited while Bruce and I scouted ahead coming across a kraken on the beach. So racing back to gather the troops including all of the mermaids who had since joined we set off to fight the kraken. It was the next morning when we defeated the Kraken and in doing so heard a huge noise coming from the battle island nearby. That must be where the wizard is creating his portal. So we swam off towards the battle island. We lost so many troops to just a few battle creatures and we never even saw a single one of the wizard's minions. I would definitely need to make a stronger force if I was to come back here. So for now we simply chose to retreat and mourn our losses. As I was almost home on Broccoli there was a Majungasaurus nearby which although it wasn't from the wizard was still dangerous to be so close. So Broccoli and I went to take it out only for it to kill me off my mount. Snappers! Oh, rip little buddy. Rest in peace, Snappers. I will miss you. I managed to get my stuff back as well as Snappers' little hat, so I put it on in remembrance of our little Sino. He will be missed. Before finally getting home, placing down a sign, and even throwing out some flowers for Snappers. Of all the losses today, Snappers hit the hardest. I spent the rest of the day just throwing up baby tech staggers for them to die and in the morning harvesting them for metal electronics and oil. I really needed some kibble. So for that you need crops. So for those you need fertilizer. So I flew off to tame some dung beetles. Managing to tame three of them before heading home where I shoved them in a soul terminal to begin passively converting poop. I would also be needing a ton of rare flowers and mushrooms for later crafts and potions. So I flew up to make use of the wizard's minions, some living mushroom. I was able to trank out and tame, 
as these guys when harvested give both of those. So I plan to harvest their babies for unlimited mushrooms and flowers. The mushroom finally tamed up as the day came to an end. And in the morning, I saw a wolf nearby that was strangely friendly. A Galragarian direwolf. Interesting. The wolf eventually tamed up when Protorax, another patron, came by to give me a lift back up the mountain to my Argent before spending some time taming even more mushrooms of different shapes and sizes for breeding pets. A common troll even tried to stop me taming my mushrooms, but well, he then decided to have a nap. Then finally as day 51 was coming to an end, I trapped up my last mushroom before flying home on my arm. I set up my shrooms to begin breeding in the mornings, but the babies look a little bit different. Why is it a dilo? Mushroom, you need to explain something to your husband. Yeah, breeding patchwork creatures is a little broken. But I did learn that the mushrooms passively generate narcotics, so that's a bonus. I was out scouting on my Dralian, and my word, some of the monsters starting to spawn were getting tough. I tried fighting this Void Keeper only to almost lose my Dralian, and that's when I saw it. A massive bug. That thing is huge. It definitely came from Australia. I even saw another one in the morning as I flew over the desert. I don't think I have anything strong enough to fight this wizard. But I wonder if I can use some of his minions against him. It was day 55 when I came across an Alpha Cyclops that I was able to easily kill for some more experience. And then I headed off to the desert where I saw this giant frog looking thing. And it was a passive tame. So I gave him my meat and whilst hunger was draining I found these massive lizards known as the Deserox. I really wanted one. But I simply did not have the tranks I needed at the moment. I got back to my Threkek, who was finally tamed in the morning, and I just had to name him Angry Froge. I mean, look at him. I found another Mimic fighting some dodes that I was killing for its loot. Oh no, fly Archie, fly! My conveyance eventually killed the hobgoblin, but I had noticed a giant dragon on the hill nearby. Now that thing looks cool. A blizzarox. I want it. Once I had it down and sleeping, I needed some prime port, but with the sun beating down on me, I was starting to die. So I ended up flying all the way home, as I could come back later to feed it. As I was flying back the next day, I came across another much higher level Blizzarox that I was able to trank out, even if it did take another couple hundred tranks. But it finally went to sleep, so I just spent the rest of the day harvesting some crystal. As in the morning, I set up an alchemy table to make some taming potions. Except I was meant to make an alchemy station. Whoops. I was short of some silica pearls, so I did go loot some beavers of their life savings again. Got home, placed the alchemy station, made up some taming potions and flew out back to the blizzard rocks. Gave in my mutton and taming potions, but it was still taking forever. So I just left it to tame up eventually. I found and tamed a cockatrice on day 61, which was just chill passive tame, before flying back to the desert again as I wanted one of those bearded dragon thingies. Now that the lizard was finally sleeping, I force fed it drugs and shoved in my meat, successfully taming the lizard. It absolutely sucks. But at least it looks cool. I was chilling out on a rock in the early hours of day 64 before flying across the desert when I spotted a max level necro rocks, a flying skeleton dragon thing. I thought it'd be cool, so I began to trank it out, chasing it across the sand dunes where I eventually got it asleep and taming. With the ability to spit poison balls, it was an okay tame, but not as amazing as I hoped. And that's when I came across a camera. The wizard had started bringing some insane creatures into this world. And this was just what I needed to tame to be able to take him down. I finally managed to knock it out in the morning, except there was a problem. I'm sure you already noticed. Wait, why isn't it eating? Oh no! No taming food! Ah! Yeah, it doesn't have any taming food, thus rendering it untamable. 
My Blizzorox was finally tamed at the end of day 66. Yeah, the dragon we knocked out quite a few days ago. Although it was incredibly slow, this dragon was a powerhouse. And waking up in the morning, I walked out my door only to see... What the heck is a drake? That's not a drake, that's a dragon. Ooh, uh, I wonder if I can touch it. It says pats. No, nope, he's mad. Run, 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 run. Yeah, that is a dragon king. One of the fiercest creatures in all of the arc. One issue, in order to tame it, you need the chosen one's aura. An aura that you can only earn if you defeat some magical beast. But I'm not ready for that yet, as you can tell, even a hobgoblin can kill me. Perseus was able to help me out and kill the hobgoblin relatively easy, and flying out on Doug, I ended up coming across the most ferocious beast yet. An Antaras. Something that we'd seen early in the play. But now it had taming food. This is exactly what I need to defeat the wizard. Oh, no, 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 no. That was close. After struggling to trank it out with a trap, I finally gave in and set up a behemoth square. Just go in, you overgrown lizard. I want you to be my friend. I finally got it into the trap on day 69. Nice. I just had to deal with all the Amargas that absolutely swarm this island. But now I could finally start to trank it up. But oh, come on. I finally got back, built up a tower that I could begin shooting off of, and it fell asleep on day 71. So I murdered all the nearby Amargas, shoved in my meat, and she became my friend. I decided to name her Antoinette after this one lady who was screaming so loud she basically had flames coming out her mouth. And now this beast was my most powerful tame yet. We got back to base on day 72. And at this point with 28 days left before the wizard reaching his full power, I was feeling good. But I knew just one Antares would not be enough to face his might. So I flew up on Doug, gliding all around the map, searching for a male tame. I even found this incredibly peaceful island that looked to be untouched so far by the wizard's reach. I was able to gather some species X plants here that I could set up for extra defenses. Nice. I was still on the hunt for more Antares in the afternoon when suddenly darkness. South Africa low chetty. Once I was able to finally get back and back to my stuff, Doug was dead. Rest in peace, Doug. You were a good Maywing. I had a small ceremony for Doug before spending the rest of the day setting up some defenses as I knew the wizard was growing stronger and stronger. And sooner or later he would attack before I am able to attack first. I even set up my species X for that extra touch of defense. It was day 77 when I noticed that activity around my base was really started to ramp up. I needed to deal with this. So I whistled my air force to follow me so we could take out some of the dangers. And with the entire air force defeated, I had to retreat to get home before the Void Royal followed me. And with the void defeated, it was time to clear up the Romanian scouts left behind. Because Antoinette was an absolute beast. And it was day 78 as I finally decided I could no longer run around in simple clothes, especially while under attack. So crafted up myself a set of the finest draconian armor. Looking out into the distance on Antoinette, I could see that another wave was forming. There were scouts everywhere. And that's when they attack.
was day 79 when I finally pushed back all of the attackers and there were a few stragglers who was picking off with my pistol while riding on woofles. Oh shit, here we go, the wizard is a dead yet! Rip Woofles. After finally defeating the final wave with Antoinette, I placed down a grave in remembrance of Woofles, and that's when I saw it off in the distance. A level 174 Antares. So I trapped it, tranked it, and tamed it. It was the morning of day 82 when I realized it's great and all to have a wall, but if my face is made of wood, the wizard could easily destroy it. So I spent the next few hours completely upgrading the base. Walls, floors, and roofs were all upgraded. One of my scouts reported to me in the morning of day 85, the location to a magical tree that was protected by five guardians. This tree is how the wizard had been concealing himself the entire time. So I would have to find this tree and defeat its guardians in order to prove myself. So the tree can reveal his location. So I headed out on Ducky flying all across the map when I finally came up on a deserted island. Okay, so the scout said, come to the desert island of the south and scan the seabed and there you shall find the entrance you desire. Uh, this looks like a place. Oh no, the trees, I, I can't break tames here? Uh, this is gonna be rough. I managed to find my way up to these scar platforms and I could see pathways down to what must be the guardian fight. I easily killed the Arthro while the basilisk required a little more running but I brought that down too with my shotgun. The scorpion and mantis were easy kills as well and surely this wouldn't just be that easy. And I could see the life tree was still unwavered by the guardian's deaths so I knew I still had one final challenge. So as I descended into the final arena, I summoned in the fifth guardian. Oh snap, that's a giga. Once the giga fell, I could instantly sense where the wizard was, almost as if the tree had linked his subconscious to mine. Battle Island. I was going to need an army. It was day 91 when I set up two of my Antares that I had tamed to begin breeding as just two would never be enough. At Taras, this is it. Today we march on to Battle Island where we defeat the wizard once and for all. Follow me. It was day 97 as my army of Antares and I charged in to fight the wizard's forces. There were hundreds of wizard's minions swarming the island, but my Antares were powerful, melting everything in their way. We were slowly gaining our ground, making our way up into the crater where the wizard was lying in wait. You fool! You thought I was here hiding! But I just simply couldn't be bothered to track you down. Oh shit, it's a Colossus! Fight the terrorists! Fight! Fight! Fight!
It took many days, but I finally defeated the Colossus on day 100. However, the wizard was nowhere to be seen. In all the commotion and chaos, he had made one final effort and ripped open the portal, causing these fantasy creatures to be stuck here permanently. Maybe one day, I'll meet the wizard again, but for now, I simply headed home in order to rest.